Redfall is finally here and Bethesda have kindly sponsored this video and sent over a copy of the game and me and Flynn and Cobb have been playing it for the last four hours or so in co-op, having an awesome time. And one of the things that I found the most exciting in the game so far are the nests. So in this video, I'm going to show you how you unlock the nests and get them active in your game world, some tips and tricks on finding the entrance to them, getting through them in one piece, and how to get the best rewards at the end of them. There's a few things that maybe aren't too obvious about them, so make sure you watch all the way to the end. As always, if you're enjoying the video, don't forget to like and subscribe, it really does help me out a bunch. So, to unlock the nest in the first place, you need to progress through the main quest a little bit and level your character up. So, this is fairly straightforward, just complete those early quests and make sure you've leveled up to the point where you've at least got all of your different abilities. So you should have the two main abilities and then your ultimate ability. I'm not entirely sure where the trigger exactly is before the nests appear. When you get to the point in the main campaign where there's three missions to choose from, we had completed two of them and then before we did the third one, the nests were then on the map and they appear as these kind of blue circles. If it is just linked to the missions, I do strongly suggest you level up as well, because whereas the first nest you go in doesn't seem to be too hard, after that they do start really ramping up in difficulty, and some of the toughest fights we've had so far in the game have all been within these nests. So you really want to have your abilities, you want to have some decent weapons and things like that, all sorted out before you go in. So once you've unlocked the nests and they are starting to appear on your map, you'll see these blue circles around. And when you're wandering around the game world, you can actually see them as like almost a force field. It's like this blue miasma. Miasma is a lovely word. There's a blue miasma around these areas. And when you go in there, the enemies will be tougher. So vampires will be more aggressive. They'll be stronger. Enemies around there will be stronger. And one of the ways you can stop that from happening to get rid of their buff is by clearing out the nest. Now to find the nest, you actually have to find a blue glowing door. It's usually in kind of the center of it. Like in this location, it was underneath a bridge. In another location, it was on the side of a shed. The door was there, but it glows bright blue and the area isn't too big. So you shouldn't have too much difficulty in finding it. If you're playing in co-op, and I genuinely think the best way to play Redfall is in co-op, it makes all games really, really entertaining and really funny. So if you're playing in co-op, you need to get everyone sort of gathered around the door before you can go through it. So just make sure everyone stands near it, then you should be able to interact with it and you'll load into the nest. Now the nest itself seems to be made out of sections of kind of Redfall of the town mashed up a little bit. So sometimes we've seen sections repeat but then the next section that they attach to isn't always the same. So like we've seen the cinema in two of them and we've seen the bit where there's like a conservatory in two of them, but the rest of those nests were very different. So it seems like there's some kind of maybe random generator, procedural generator going on where you'll have different sections as you go through. You'll also have different types of enemies as you go through. And sometimes like the first time we went through, there was barely anything to fight. Like there were hardly any enemies in there at all. There was a few of them kind of being zapped by some electricity held in place, which I think is one of the modifiers the nests can have. It tells you about them at the very beginning before you go in. And then sometimes we had tons of vampires, like absolute hordes of them, just charging at us as soon as we went through. Whatever happens, you're probably going to have to do some fighting and you're going to be fighting a bunch of vampires. So as always in Redfall, make sure you've got some elemental weapons, make sure you've got some stakes or weapons of stakes on the end ready to take them down. As you're going through, you'll find loads of these red crystals dotted about. These have victims that have been trapped in there. They've kind of been turned into crystals, I guess. And near some of them, you'll be able to find a bunch of different ammunition for different weapon types. And on others, you'll find some health supplies, which you will probably need. Like when we were playing through this on co-op, we didn't find the main game that hard. We were playing on normal difficulty, but every combat encounter, we were kind of breezing through. And I thought it was just something to do with co-op. Like there is enemy scaling in co-op, but it didn't seem to be too harsh. So we were finding it fairly easy to get past. The nests were the first time where we had fights where it seemed a little bit like we could actually die here. Like we could run out of resources and die. So make sure you always grab the ammo and health kits when you get a chance. 
When you get towards the end of the nest, then you're going to see that there's this big heart in the middle and a bunch of crystals that are all kind of connected to it in some way. In one of the nests we went into, we had a bunch of enemies in this section and one of the hardest fights. So if there are any enemies there, you're going to need to clear them out first. Once all of the enemies are dead, then you can go around and one by one just start breaking these tethers. You just go up to them and interact with them. And once you've broken all of them, then the heart will be vulnerable. You'll be able to shoot it and that will destroy it. It'll shatter quite impressively. And then in the middle of it, you'll be able to pick up a box that has one of those blood vials in it. You know, one of the ones that gives you some extra damage resistance. But now the important part happens. You've now got one minute to try and loot this nest before it shuts down. So you'll see all of these red glowing walls dotted around the area where the heart was. You need to smash those. You can just walk up to them and melee them, or you can shoot them. And then behind each one, there'll be a couple of boxes. Sometimes there'll be cultist bags. More often than not, there'll be weapon cases that you can open up to get some quite high level loot. Like in all of the time we were playing, this is where we found the highest level stuff. It always seems to be kind of keeping up with where we were. So you can run around as frantically as you can, smash them all open, open up all the weapon cases, and then you will find behind one of them, there's a door to escape. But my tip is don't bother using that. When the timer gets to zero, you're just gonna get kicked out anyway. There doesn't seem to be any penalty for not using the door to escape. So don't waste time worrying about the door. Just go to all of the chests, get as much loot as you can, and then when the timer runs out, you'll be kicked back into the normal world. Let's move. And now you've completed a nest. Now, every time we completed a campaign mission, it seemed like another two or so nests would appear. So it seems like there's something you can basically farm. And I would strongly suggest if you're trying to get better loot, if you feel like your loot maybe isn't quite good enough, doing these every time you do a campaign mission. So do the campaign mission, then go clear out the nest, come on and do the next campaign mission, then clear out the nests. It will make the game world a little bit safer for you or make it easier to get about, but it will also mean that you're constantly getting the absolute best loot you'll be getting loot that stays with your level. In the main game, sometimes I find I don't get any weapons for quite a long time, whereas in these nests, you just get an absolute ton of stuff. So that was Nests in Redfall. If there's another part of the game you'd like a guide you think it'd be useful for, don't forget to let me know in the comments. It helps me out a bunch. And of course, like and subscribe on this video. Massive thanks to Bethesda for sponsoring this, and I'll see you for the next one. Goodbye.